when you've got a pounding headache, a fever that won't quit, or sore muscles after a long day. There are two names that almost always come to mind, Advil and Tylenol. Both are staples in medicine cabinets across the world, often tossed into bags for travel or kept at the office just in case. But even though they sit side by side on the pharmacy shelf, these two pain relievers aren't the same. They work differently inside the body, treat slightly different issues, and even come with their own sets of risks. So, if you've ever wondered which one is better for you, or more importantly, which one you shouldn't take in certain situations, let's break it all down, right here, on History of Simple Things. Advil is the brand name for ibuprofen, which falls under a category of drugs known as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. That's a long way of saying ibuprofen not only helps with pain, but also reduces inflammation and lowers fever. This makes it a popular choice for situations where swelling is part of the problem. Think sprained ankles, sore muscles after a workout, menstrual cramps, or even the stiffness that comes with arthritis. It's a go-to for people who want something that tackles both the pain and the inflammation causing it. One of the reasons Advil is so effective is that it works by blocking enzymes in your body called cyclooxygenase enzymes. These enzymes are responsible for producing prostaglandins, chemical messengers that trigger pain, fever, and swelling. By reducing prostaglandins, ibuprofen can help calm down the whole response. That's why you'll often hear people say Advil is the inflammation fighter between the two. Tylenol, on the other hand, is acetaminophen. And here's where things get interesting. Even though it's one of the most widely used pain relievers in the world, scientists still don't fully understand how it works. What we do know is that it's excellent at reducing pain and lowering fever, but unlike ibuprofen, it doesn't do much for inflammation. That's why if you've got swollen joints or a sports injury, Tylenol probably won't give you the same level of relief as Advil. Researchers believe acetaminophen works in the brain and spinal cord changing how the body perceives pain and regulating the heat control center to reduce fever. It doesn't affect prostaglandins in the same way as ibuprofen, which explains why it doesn't reduce swelling. But because it works centrally in the nervous system, it's especially good for things like headaches, toothaches, or general aches and pains when inflammation isn't the main issue. So. When does Advil shine? If you're dealing with anything where inflammation is the culprit, ibuprofen tends to be the better option. This could be muscle soreness from exercise, swelling from an injury, or even chronic conditions like arthritis. Many women also swear by ibuprofen for menstrual cramps because the drug specifically targets prostaglandins, which are heavily involved in those painful contractions. Advil is also useful for bringing down fevers, though so is Tylenol, so that part's more of a tie. Another thing to note is that ibuprofen works relatively quickly, usually within 30 minutes to an hour, and its effects can last up to six hours. That's pretty handy if you're trying to get through a long day without being slowed down by pain or swelling. Tylenol, meanwhile, tends to be the safer bet for people who can't take NSAIDs. If you have stomach ulcers, acid reflux, or certain heart conditions, ibuprofen might not be the best idea because it can irritate the stomach lining and, over long periods, increase risks for gastrointestinal bleeding or cardiovascular problems. In those cases, acetaminophen is often recommended because it doesn't have the same effect on the stomach or blood vessels. It's also generally considered safer for children and pregnant women, though of course only in recommended doses and under medical guidance. 
Parents often reach for Tylenol when their kids have fevers, and doctors frequently suggest it for general pain management in people who shouldn't be taking anti-inflammatory drugs. Tylenol works best for headaches, mild to moderate pain, and situations where swelling isn't the main issue. Of course, neither drug is perfect, and Advil comes with its own set of warnings, because it reduces prostaglandins, which also help protect the stomach lining and keep blood flowing to the kidneys. Long-term or heavy use of ibuprofen can lead to stomach ulcers, kidney problems, and even increased blood pressure. That's why doctors usually caution against taking it daily unless prescribed. It's also not the best option if you're already taking blood thinners, as it can increase the risk of bleeding. Tylenol, while gentler on the stomach, carries a different kind of danger, liver damage. Acetaminophen is processed by the liver, and if you take more than the recommended dose or mix it with alcohol, the risk of serious liver injury skyrockets. This is one of the reasons health experts always stress reading labels carefully. Many cold and flu medications already contain acetaminophen, so it's easy to take more than you realize if you're also popping Tylenol tablets on the side. It's safe in normal doses, but with Tylenol, the line between safe and unsafe isn't very wide. At the end of the day, the choice between Advil and Tylenol really comes down to what you're dealing with and your personal health situation. If you've got swelling, inflammation, or cramps, Advil is usually the better pick. If you're more concerned about stomach irritation or you just need help with pain and fever, Tylenol is probably the safer route. And if you're ever unsure, especially if you have existing medical conditions, the safest option is always to ask your doctor or pharmacist before making it a habit. It's easy to think of Advil and Tylenol as interchangeable, but once you peel back the labels, you can see they're actually quite different. One fights pain by tackling inflammation head-on, while the other changes how your body perceives pain and heat. Both have their strengths, both have their risks, and both can be lifesavers in the right circumstances. So the next time you open your medicine cabinet and reach for one of those little bottles, you'll know exactly what's happening when you swallow that pill, and more importantly, whether it's really the right one for the job. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.